Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh oh. <laughs> Ava says good morning also. Yeah, we apologize. Um, we are very late today. Uh, I apologize also for not being uh, in my usual um, state <clears throat> giving these. Uh, commentaries but see since we do this every morning anyway for the family then um, even if we're late this morning we will we will do it um, we had a very late night in the Cleochico household and <clears throat> so we woke up late today but anyway we continue to do what we need to do and uh, <clears throat> this is my commitment to my own children to teach them uh, during these breakfast hours to teach them about faith and morals and we're continuing our um, commentaries on the mysteries of the rosary we're already ending October and this is what we did for the whole month actually it's the 30th already is it uh -huh. oh boy okay so we're towards the end of October, but we haven't finished all the uh, mysteries of the rosary, so we will try to uh, speed it up. So today, we said today's Wednesday, so we are supposed to be contemplating on the Glory. glorious mysteries. And we will try to do maybe the fourth and the fifth <clears throat> mysteries today, <clears throat> so we can catch up at the end of October. <clears throat> so the fourth glorious mystery is... The Assumption of Our Lady, right? So what can we think about every time we pray the fourth um, glorious mystery? Oops, be careful. What can we imagine? How can we contemplate the fourth glorious mystery? We can imagine Our Lady on her deathbed, surrounded by the apostles. It was the moment when Our Lord deigned it um, appropriate and the best time to take Our Lady into His own presence, to the presence of God in heaven. So you can imagine Our Lady is said to have fallen asleep. There are two schools of thought in theology about how Our Lady um, ended her life on earth and was assumed into heaven. There is that one, one school of thought that says Our Lady died, just like, just like uh, any human being. And Our Lady died because death is the, uh, the, the manner of passage between this earthly life and eternal life. Even our Lord uh, suffered death. Our Lord's humanity suffered death. So Our Lady, um, one school of thought says Our Lady also died and, and uh, went through the experience of death. But there's also that other school of thought that says, well, since Our Lady was immaculate and Our Lady um, did not sin, she didn't have original sin, then she could not have died in the same way that all human beings die. Okay? Because death is the consequence of sin. Okay? You learned that from the Catechism, right? That death entered into the world as a consequence of original sin. And since Our Lady was free from original sin, then that school of thought uh, opines that our Lady did not suffer death. That maybe she just fell asleep and then was assumed into heaven. So the church really is, uh, is silent about which of these uh, opinions is true. And maybe we will only learn about, about it when we get to heaven ourselves and, and we can get to ask Our Lady, did you die? <laughs> But anyway, anyway, uh, we can imagine the scene where Our Lady was 
on her deathbed, uh, having spent uh, her life with Jesus, accompanying Jesus in every step of the way in his life, and then accompanying the infant church which Jesus entrusted to his apostles and to her. And um, now our Lord has thought it best that, okay, uh, it's time for his old mother to go to heaven and be with him forever. She has accomplished her work on earth to be a co-redemptrix with Jesus and to accompany the infant church uh, to a certain, up to a certain point where they could already be left alone to continue the work that Jesus has commissioned them to do. And so we can imagine Our Lady from her bed being assumed into heaven, taken up, going up into heaven, body and soul, body and soul. So she's the only other person who has her own glorious body in heaven. Okay? The other one being Jesus. Okay? Now, what's the difference between the ascension and the assumption? What's the difference? Jesus took in the ascension, eh, Jesus, took himself Jesus took himself up to heaven by his own power. Right? He ascended by himself. The assumption means that Jesus took Mary up to heaven. Okay, God took Mary. Our Lady didn't have the power to bring herself up to heaven. She was not God, right? But God took her. So God assumed her. God made her rise and go to heaven. That's the big difference between uh, those two mysteries of the ascension and the assumption. And so you can imagine the apostles looking up as Our Lady was being taken up from them and going up into heaven, right? It must have been a very, very beautiful sight there must have been some sadness there on the part of the apostles because they knew they were our lady was departing from them she who was given to them and to us as a mother is now going to be physically apart from them but but they knew in their hearts that she's not really going to leave them, right? That while she might have gone up to heaven, they know also that she remains with them forever to guide all of them. She has assured them that she will always be with each and every one of them. And <clears throat> this we know from many other revelations <clears throat> and apparitions of Our Lady about how she has actually uh, been very much uh, accompanying the entire church and that is why she is called the mother of the church okay that is why she is the mother of each and every one of us and the mother of the entire church and as a mother she's not going to leave us orphans she's always going to be by our side she's always going to be accompanying us all the time and that is why we have to have a big devotion to our lady okay second to mommy she is our mommy okay and so we have to have a very close devotion to our lady so that she can always accompany us in our journey through life okay okay now we'll speed it up a little bit and let's go to the glorious mystery of uh the coronation okay the fifth glorious mystery is the coronation of our lady so now Our Lady is in heaven. Our Lady is in heaven. And what does, uh, what does God do uh, upon receiving Our Lady in heaven? You can just imagine as Our Lady gets up into heaven there, the whole, all of the choirs of angels, all of the saints who have gone uh, before her when Jesus opened up the gates of heaven upon his resurrection, right? You can imagine everybody there so happy and greeting Our Lady. There must have been a big party, right? A party like no other party has ever been thrown 
uh, here on earth. A big, big party in heaven with, with choirs of angels singing and with everybody uh, uh, endlessly clapping and cheering for Our Lady. Our Lady who was the most perfect of all creatures. Really the crown jewel of God's creation. See? The best and the most perfect. Everybody must have been cheering her arrival into heaven. Right? And I could imagine that right there and then, there was a crowning ceremony. Yes, Joe? I thought they didn't have bodies, though. Well, <laughs> we just were imagining how, how they would have received Our Lady. Right? So, <clears throat> we are thinking in our own human terms. That's why. See? We can only think in our own human terms. And, and imagine that uh, that could be what was happening there. So everybody cheering, everybody uh, uh, clapping, everybody singing for Our Lady. And we could imagine like a, 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 a red or, or purple uh, 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 carpet laid out for her, right? And Our Lady was, was marching down that aisle like the queen that she is and the queen that she was about to be crowned to be, okay? And that she was taken up by the side of Jesus Christ the King, whose feast we just celebrated right, in the Latin Mass last Sunday. So Our Lady would have been given her own throne in heaven. And then with a crown of stars on her head and the moon under her feet as St. John was privileged to, to, to visualize. Okay? And as he wrote in, in Revelations, Okay? I saw this vision in the sky with a woman crowned with 12 stars on her head and the moon under her feet. See, God must have allowed St. John to have this vision of the coronation of Our Lady as Queen of Heaven and Earth. Queen of Heaven and Earth, the crown jewel of creation. The best creature that God has ever prepared, has ever made, has ever preserved and is now glorifying in heaven his own mother his queen our lady can be also not only a queen in heaven for us but a queen in our hearts okay? we should cherish our lady our mother and queen and give thanks to God all the time for, for having given us Our Lady as our mother and queen. Okay? She's the queen of the universe. And the, the, the depiction of her with a crown of 12 stars and the moon under her feet is precisely the, 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 the kind of expression that, that says it all. That says that she is the most perfect of all creatures that she encompasses everything, all the perfections that there is in creation, that she was the best creature there ever was, and that she is worthy to be crowned queen of the universe, queen of creation. Right? And we have to be proud that we have a queen for a mother. She is our mother too. and She's not only Jesus' mother. Jesus gave her to us remember at the foot of the cross behold your mother he tells saint john and tells our lady behold your son and all of us are represented in saint john so all of us are children of the queen and therefore we have to behave and we have to act as worthy children of our mother the queen Okay? And that means, that means, what does that mean for us in practical and concrete terms? What does it mean to behave like worthy children of our queen? Huh? Yes, Mia. Obey. What is that? Obey your parents. To, oh, to obey your parents? Okay. What else? What else? How should we live our lives to be worthy of being royalty, of being children of the queen. 
Eh? You could imagine the children of Queen Elizabeth, right? And her grandchildren and all her, her relatives, how do they behave? How do they conduct themselves? Well, they're not exactly a good model for, <laughs> for good behavior, but you know, you can just imagine that they try to behave as properly as they could, okay? Despite their own limitations and defects, right? They try to behave with the royal dignity, with the dignity of being children of the Queen Mother. Well, the same thing is true for us. We should also always try to live with the dignity of being children of our Queen Mother. And that means really, in practical terms, that really means being as virtuous as Our Lady was, if we can. Right? Trying to assume, trying to imitate the virtuous life of Our Lady. Because that is what her legacy is for all of us. It's her virtue. She's the queen of all virtues as we recite in the litany, right? All the virtues there that Our Lady stood for and lived by. We can also try to assume those kinds of virtues in our own lives. And that way, we can be worthy to be called children of the queen and children of the king. Okay? Okay. That's it for us, folks. I hope you have a good rest of your day today. I know it's pretty late for us. It's almost 9 o'clock. We'll try to make do with what we can today. And those of you in other countries, good night. Hi, Minnie. Uh, hi, Art. Uh, some friends are there listening. Hey, and we have Ava. Say hi, Ava. Hi. Say hi and goodbye, Ava. Bye. Oh, there she's waving. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.